Hey y'all, SEMA 2017, and I got a 67 Chevy 2 Nova Detroit Speeds build I think y'all are gonna like. Let me get the camera turned on, we'll take a quick look at it. Chris, thanks for giving me some time today, brother, to tell me about this uh, 67 Chevy 2 y'all had at SEMA. Yeah, well, thank you. Appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, really, it's uh, the owner, Bob, is just an unbelievable guy. Just uh, But the guys here use their imagination uh, with all the cool, neat features that he wanted to kind of style into the car. And uh, he really wanted to build a car for uh, you know, purpose built. You know, it's, uh, it's built for One Lap of America. Uh, and it's built for the Ultimate Street Car Association to run in those events. And uh, it's really, you know, it's a track prepared car, but it's still a street car. So he's done had, uh, all had kinds Had this of been things. something he had thought about for a long time? I mean, he'd been a Chevy 2 fan. I mean, um, yeah, I think so. I think so. He's been kind of, uh, uh, it's one of those things where it's, it's kind of a neat feature car and uh, just a neat niche type scenario. And he wanted to see some, he wanted to see one that would, uh, that would carve and, and handle and and uh, that's kind of how we ended up with it. Yeah, he's he's more so for track also, not just uh, not just on the autocross aspect of. It, but he's uh, more of a track junkie than just autocross. So he's uh, he's kind of he's kind of he's he's kind of an all around type of type of guy. So yeah, he's I think he's excited about that. So be able to do them both. Would you see, what'd you do what'd you do to set it up for him? Uh, it's really kind of cool. We've done uh, of course the Detroit Speed. Uh, subframe around the front and a quad link kind of the rear but we've also done a lot of neat features where it's like uh we've done a jack rail on the both rocker panels mark uh, uh mark mcdonald basically he cut in full tubular frame on either side of the of the rocker so the, the car can be jacked up from any point uh, anywhere on the rocker uh, for quick easy access uh, he's taken and, and raised the rear quarter lips so if he happens to be out on the road and has a flat or something he, you don't have to fully disassemble the rear end to, to, to change out a rear tire on if you want to. And, uh, you know, Bob's done a full set of uh, spares. Uh, so when he does go to the track, he can swap out to, to put track tires on or just drive the street tires on if he wants to. So uh, we've got all kinds of other stuff, though. It's like it has the Holly dash pack in it, uh, so it's fully electronic. And, and it's kind of cool features where it's got the true static gauges that are on the uh, – uh, that are under the hood. So when you raise the hood, you physically see a, a live gauge. There's no electronics involved with that. It's, uh, it's either oil pressure or temp, so you physically see what it is. Uh, that would be a temp. Oh, so you cut all the uh, you cut all the mystery of the black box exactly, out of it. Exactly, exactly. So you can go back to old school to where you're reading it and you're sure that's exactly what the temperature is, what that the pressure is. It's not it's, some glitch in a computer. Exactly. It's not some calibration or, or, or where it's set. It's the real number. Cool. A lot of really cool neat What motor are you running? Uh, he's got a, uh, an LS3. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, it's LS7. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's one that was done by uh, uh, the guys out in Arizona at ADS. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's basically it's a uh, uh, Brodax heads, uh, the BR7 heads. Uh, it's got a it's got uh, one of those special one of those special cams and stuff in it. Uh, the uh, uh, the engine is really, uh, is truly one of theirs, you know, from from top to bottom. So. It looks like it's got like a carbon fiber intake or something to it. Is that am I right? It does. It does. It's a one-off carbon fiber intake. Uh, Mark actually designed this a true cow induction intake. Uh, so you see the the cow vents that are there, but actually it's forced induction through that cow through the air pressure. So that it forces it right into that uh, that air intake. Now, that air intake inside of it has a, has a key and in uh, filter, so it's truly replaceable inside and has easy access from the top side of it. But, uh, but it is a true carbon fiber. We actually did the, we, we first, Mark did it uh, out of metal first. You can kind of look at our website and see how we've done that. And then we actually 3D that image and then built a uh, plug for it to actually do a carbon fiber in insert for it. So. So is that a Detroit Speed people can now order? No, no, this is a custom no. one-off. It's custom one-off. I gotcha. One I gotcha. Now, are those intakes for something in the front bumper, or am I not seeing something right? Uh, intake in the front bumper, that's just for additional cooling. Uh, oh, okay. The, you know, the car's going to live its life in Arizona, so uh, uh, we'd want to get as much cooling in there as possible. Same reason we've got the vents in, this, in the carbon fiber hood, uh, is to, to be able to let the, let the air escape out there and, and reduce uh, reduce pressure under the hood as 
well. So. I see you left the cup or put some cup holders in the interior. Yeah, that's really that's a really neat thing there. The, uh, the that pole center console scenario. If you take a closer look at it, uh, it has a quick pin release in the front of it. You literally pull that pin out, and lift the console out and out of the way, and then inside the trunk you'll see a uh, 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 fire extinguisher mount that you pull the same type of pin out. You can transfer the fire extinguisher into the center console area. So when you're in, you're in your own track, you've got a, you know, if you've got a you know, competitor or something's having an issue and you need to stop and help out or something, you can you know, pull that one rather than pulling the fire suppression systems in the car. So How cool is this, that? You all really thought that out. Oh, was that your idea, his idea? No, it's, it's uh, Mark and uh, Josh on the build. That's kind of something we came up with for, for Bob, and we knew he was going to use the car, and we definitely wanted to make sure that... Uh, Features like that really make make a difference. So. Well, that's a that's a safety and a comfort feature, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when Absolutely. you want to be comfortable, you can put the console in, and when you want to be safe on the track, then you put the fire extinguisher in. There you go. Oh, there you go. That's a brilliant idea. If you look at the interior, the the back seat is uh, uh, since it has the fixed harness bar inside the car, right. it's not really a truly usable back seat. Uh, but so what we did was. The fire suppression system that's uh, it's integrated into the car, the access to the bottle is under the passenger side. Uh, so you can raise the uh, hinged seat bottom to look down and have storage compartment there along with uh, access to that fire bottle so you can see how much pressure's in the bottle. And then on the driver's side, you've got access to just an extra storage area. So, oh, wow. so you've got a place to toss his helmet bag and fire suit and stuff back behind the seat. How cool is that? Now tell me, I mean, everybody's familiar with uh, Detroit Speed, or they should be familiar with Detroit Speed and your suspension parts and those kind of things. But do you all do whole builds? Yeah, that's that's what this is. This is a this is a full build. Uh, the build shop here in the project shop, uh, we've got uh, four fabrication days where we have uh, four cars pretty much in process at all time in fabrication. Then we've also got uh, our, our paint and body shop, and we've got our assembly and wiring area. The one thing we probably don't do in-house uh, as much of, is, of course, is interior, uh, but unless it's something really standard. And then uh, uh, all the custom stuff we do send out. To cool. And what area. wheels are you running on it? Uh, forge line. It's all, it's all forge. It's a forge line package. Um, like I said, Bob's actually purchased uh, two sets of those, identical. So he'd have uh, a set of set of track wheels there. They're actually 1810s in the front and 1811 and halfs in the rear. Gosh. So. Yeah, it's got a great stance to it. And tell me, you, yeah. I, it looks like, you know, I mean, a lot of people go with a shiny color, then black out everything. Well, you all went through mm -hmm. and left some things chrome, black some things out, and, of course, you got the body color of red. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That, uh, that uh, a Ferrari red is what the color he really liked and wanted to, when it was just so it would pop. And uh, Michael in the body shop and those guys... And Michael, and Michael and Austin, they really, uh, they really made that one shine. They, uh, uh, with uh, a lot of cool, neat features that Mark did, uh, and with Josh was the like the shaved rip rails, the flush mount glass, um, all those type of things, the special uh, moldings on the belt moldings and stuff. Really wanted to make that whole window opening just kind of go away, so we kind of hid it all out in black since we did the flush mount glass system. The one thing we also did was, you notice there's no vent window in the in the driver's passenger window. We've done away okay. with those. So it's a one-piece glass going up, and then the quarter windows to save a little bit of weight. Uh, we did away with the regulators. It has uh, quick quarter turns so that the quarter windows actually slide out to the front, and it has a uh, bag that you actually hold the, and store the quarter glasses in when you go to the track to, just to cut out some additional weight. Holy smokes. Any other cool features that I may not know to ask about? Uh, yeah, the, the door handles, are, those are one-offs that we've done here for Detroit Speed. Uh, we did it here in our CNC shop. Uh, uh, Mark uh, set those in and also flushed the, uh, uh, the door lock cylinders, so it's all a nice, smooth finish there. Uh, Bob wanted a really cool feature people don't think about a lot. He's, he's in the big European cars, and... Uh, he wanted to move the fuel filler from the driver's side of the car to the passenger side. That way, whenever he pulls into a gas station or something or pulls into the pit, uh, you know, the gas fuel is on the passenger side. So, right. so that's really, really cool <laughs> well, feature. That is so, cool, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. If people want to get in touch with you all, what's the best way to do that? 
Uh, they can call us here at Detroit Speed. Uh, they can drop us an email if they like. It's, uh, just go to our website. It's uh, DetroitSpeed.com or uh, contact us here at our main number. It's 704 662 and uh, sales staff be glad to talk with them about any of the product and stuff that's on the car. And if they are interested in doing a build with us here, uh, they can reach me uh, directly. Chris, I appreciate your time today, brother. You have done an awesome job. And, you know, I'm like, like I told you, I'm a big fan of these cars, and I'm always chasing you all around trying to get some information on them. So I really, really appreciate your appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk to me today. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's a, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be uh, working with these guys. Every single one of these guys here at Detroit Speed, are, they're just phenomenal. They're, they're artists at work, every single one of them. And uh, uh, people come to us for a reason. They come to us to get a to get a car done, get it done right, and uh, get something that's been designed, engineered, and developed uh, for them to do something with it. And it's really kind of cool to, to work with these guys every single day. They, they do great work. And, and what really makes it cool is when, you're looking at a car at seam and you see that car sitting there and, and lo and behold, you go back and look at it a second or third or fourth time, you're seeing something different every single time you come back to the car. That's cool how a car draws you in that way and you think it's it so, it almost well overwhelms you at first and then an hour later, two hours later, two days later, a month yeah. later, you see it somewhere else, you're like, oh, I didn't even notice it. Did you guys just put that on there? I didn't notice <laughs> that, you know? Exactly. So, exactly. And I think, the, I personally, I think the Detroit Speed story, folks, if you've not heard that or, or read it, uh, figured it out, I mean, I think that's really cool how all this got started and... Um, you know, again, you guys just keep building cool, and uh, whenever you have time, I sure love to talk to you about your cars. Awesome, man. Glad to talk with you. So there you go. From the SEMA Show 2017, a 1967 Chevy to Detroit Speed Edition. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Hey, y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.